Wow, that was loud! Hey everyone, welcome to another 3D printing video. So today I partnered up with Sane Smart to try out this nylon carbon fiber filament. This should have much better strength and heat tolerance when compared to other 3D printer filaments. Something you might not know about nylon is it's actually a very flexible material. Nylon becomes a really strong material when you reinforce it with glass or carbon fibers. So in this case it's been reinforced with carbon fiber and let's take a look at it. It says it's 25% carbon fiber by weight. You can see here it's got this really pretty matte surface finish. And it looks that way because of all the carbon fibers in there. Carbon fiber reinforced plastics are widely used in aerospace for its high strength to weight ratio and moldability. Instead of just telling you about the strengths of carbon fiber, I'm going to put it to the test. So in today's episode, I'm going to be printing out test coupons and pulling them until they break. I'm going to be running with a bed temperature of 80 degrees Celsius and a nozzle temperature of 255 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to apply some of this magic glue stick. So Sand Smart recommends using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle or above for this filament. It looks like the carbon fiber is letting out little wisps of smoke. So I don't know if that's steam or some kind of other bad stuff, but that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this out in my garage. All right, so let's see if I can get carbon fiber nylon to work on my first try. So this first layer looks like it's going down pretty well. I guess the Uhu glue stick really worked. You can hear a slightly abrasive grinding sound as this filament's gone through. All right, so my first carbon fiber specimen just finished printing. All right, so I just finished this benchy after applying a new layer of magic glue stick. It looks like a lump of coal, basically. So I just finished printing all of my test specimens, and you can see them all laid out here. If we look at my carbon fiber specimens, you'll notice that there's a little bit of over-extrusion on all of them. I'm pretty sure this over-extrusion was caused by the filament being wet. So as it passes through the nozzle and is heated up, it goes past the boiling point of water. So any moisture that's trapped in the filament instantly converts to steam and puffs it up like popcorn. So I'm going to need to dry this filament if I want to get any good results out of it. This filament was in a sealed package with a desiccant in there and it still is too wet to print with. So this might have sat in the warehouse for a while or something and had time to absorb water, but that's just one of the risks you run when you're printing with nylon. Being an extremely hygroscopic material, it likes to pull the water out of the air. So you might need to dry it. What a lot of people will use to dry their 3D printer filaments is one of these. It's a food dehydrator. After speaking with Sandsmart, the manufacturer of this carbon fiber filament, they told me that I need to heat it to 80 to 100 degrees Celsius to dry it out before printing. But this machine doesn't go to a high enough temperature. For higher temperature filaments like nylon, you're going to need something a little bit hotter. So this is my high temperature filament dryer, also known as an air fryer. Let's take a look at its features and the drying chamber. 80 degrees Celsius is about 190 Fahrenheit. So we'll set it to that and we'll start. It's actually got a pretty large capacity. You can fit all sorts of stuff in here, like french fries or chicken wings or an entire spool of filament. But it's kind of a bad idea to put all of your filament in here at once because if something goes wrong and you end up cooking it too hot, then you'll ruin your entire spool. So it's best to test it on a small sample like this first. Air fryers basically work the same as a food dehydrator and a convection oven. They're all kind of the same thing. It's basically just a heating element and a fan to blow the air around in there rapidly to accelerate the heat transfer between the air and whatever you're trying to cook. All right, so the air fryer, I mean filament dryer, ran for 45 minutes at 90 degrees Celsius, and we'll see how that turned out. All right, so now I'm excited to present to you my home-built test frame. So with this, I'll be able to load my test samples in here and stretch them until they break. Here goes. Oh my god! I need a safer way to do this. But you can see here, it didn't even break in the test section. It broke up here, up at the top. So that's not exactly what I wanted. Since it broke on the end last time, instead of using a bolt, which can act as a stress concentration, I'm just going to use these shoelaces. So they just lace directly into there, and we'll give it a pull and see what breaks. Yeah, this is dangerous. Alright, so I just wired up the motor to another power supply 
this thing will do 20 volts and 15 amps so it'll probably break this thing <laughs> Alright, this one broke in the correct location, which is anywhere in this middle section where I know the cross-sectional area. That'll allow me to calculate the tensile strength of this material. Alright, so we just finished up our PLA test. Now time to move on to our PETG test. Alright, I got my TPU sample loaded up and now it's time to tear it up. This is the first print that I made with the carbon fiber filament as soon as I got it. It kind of puffed up from the water inside turning into steam. So it was printing more material than it thought it was. In order to counteract that, I turned my extrusion multiplier down to 80%. And that cleaned up the surface finish and made it look like it was extruding the right amount. When, it's, when you print it in its wet state, it puffs up an additional 20%. And that's not a good thing because when you turn a material into a foam, it loses strength rapidly. You would think that if you have a foam that's 50% the density of a solid material, that it might be 50% as strong. Well, no, that's not the case. It's actually more like a third as strong. To fix that problem, I air fried my carbon fiber, and then I was getting nice, clean, consistent extrusion. So this looks much better. I was still printing at 100%, and if I measured this part, it would be more dense than either of these other parts that were printed in the wet state. I'll start out with this 80% density sample, and then I'll switch over to the material that was properly dried before printing, and we'll see what the difference in strength is between the two. Alright, so now I'll be testing my carbon fiber that's an 80% foam. Alright, now we have our air fried carbon fiber. This was printed about 24 hours ago, and this matters for these prints because if you dry it out and then print it right away, it ends up being kind of a harder material. Then as it absorbs moisture, it kind of softens up a little bit. Oh, wow, that was loud! <laughs> We're starting up again with PLA+. Plus. All right, we're going again with another sample of PLA+. Plus. All right, here goes another specimen of carbon fiber. This one was printed with dried filament. It was almost finished printing, but I think it's missing one or two layers. This is the other one in the batch that didn't print all the layers, so we'll test this one too. All right, this is a PLA sample that I printed and annealed. So I put it in my food dehydrator at about 50 degrees Celsius, which in theory allows it to relieve the internal stresses inside of the printed structure. So that should make it a little bit stronger, but we'll see how it turns out. So I lost my annealed carbon fiber sample. I couldn't find it anywhere, but I found this one in the trash and this might be it. So I'm going to do one more test with the PETG. So that PETG sample completely shattered when it failed. So that's indicative of a material with low toughness. So like glass, glass shatters, it's not a very tough material. So I'll give PETG one more shot, we got another sample there. Wow, I'm finding shards of broken PETG all over the place. Alright, and that's a wrap. Time to put all the data together and review it and see which one performed the best. Alright, so here's all the data that I collected. Um, this is the failure load in pounds. You might have noticed that the scale was switching between pounds and kilograms as I was running the tests. Sometimes when the parts broke, they popped the battery out of the scale that I was using, so it reset to kilograms. So I just converted any of the readings that were in kilograms into pounds for this comparison. So if we look at the tensile strength, we can see that the two highest data values are this 8118 and this 7645. The highest performing material ended up being the PLA that had been annealed. That material might have been cheating a little bit because as I heated the material up, I think it shrank and uh, increased its cross-sectional area a little bit. So I'm not sure if this really counts as being uh, the strongest material. 
But, you know, PLA performed very well in general. PTG also performed very well. And then with my carbon fiber nylon, um, a couple of these data points ended up not being very good. First, we had the 80% foam material. So that was less dense than all of the other samples that I tested. And then we had the carbon fiber nylon. Um, I'm not sure what the deal was with this one that I found in the trash. That might have been the third sample from my print that was missing some layers. So I can't really say whether that was the annealed sample or the missing layer one. So um, we'll just kind of ignore this value for now. And if we look at the one sample that I know I dried before printing and it did not anneal, it actually ended up performing second best out of all the materials second only to this PLA sample that was annealed. So this isn't the best data because uh, I was kind of losing track of specimens and stuff, but what we can see here is that the carbon fiber nylon print was actually very strong, and PLA was also very strong. PTG performed very well also, but one of the weaknesses of PTG is it's a very brittle material. So uh, when it broke, it completely shattered. So this isn't ideal for applications where you don't want parts to break because with the PETG, it just breaks and it completely shatters apart instantly. Whereas with the PLAs and the carbon fiber nylon, there was a little bit of give before it broke. And that can be useful because if a part starts to break and you notice it, then you can take it out of service or replace that part before it fails catastrophically. I'm not sure if anyone's surprised that TPU didn't perform all that well. This material fills the niche of being flexible, and it's not necessarily the strongest material. PLA Plus ended up being weaker than PLA, and if you look at the literature of, on this, PLA Plus tends to have a lower tensile strength than PLA. The advantage of PLA Plus is that it's a tougher material, so you might be able to notice it bending before it finally breaks. So that can be advantageous in certain applications. But overall, um, I was expecting the carbon fiber nylon to do a little bit better than it did. I want to repeat this test and anneal some of the carbon fiber nylon and not lose the samples, but that'll have to wait for another video. Another advantage that carbon fiber nylon has over PLA is that it has a lower softening temperature. So if you're making something that's going to be exposed to elevated temperatures, say it's something that'll be baking in the sun in a hot car, or if you're making some kind of electrical device that gets hot, like a motor, then the carbon fiber nylon would still be a material that you'd want to use. So overall, carbon fiber nylon has some advantages over PLA and PETG, and that has more to do with toughness and resistance to high temperatures, but I wasn't able to evaluate that in this video. But I'm planning on doing some follow-up videos where I look into the other properties of carbon fiber nylon. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any ideas of some future testing that I can do, or if there's other materials tests that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can try that out. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.